Welcome to this Tobacco University. We'll be exploring a video here on polyploatization for the genetic improvement of cannabis sativa. And specifically, we're going to be breaking down a scientific study uh, that looked at investigating this particular type of poly of ploidy levels in cannabis sativa. Now, when we're talking about ploidy levels, just keep in mind we are diploid organisms, so polyploiding is referring to uh, an abnormal or an increased number in copies here. And we'll explain that more as the video goes on. On. First off, I want to be mindful that this is the research article. If you want to look at it yourself, provided with the reference here, the citation and a direct link, as well as a copy of the first page here. So first off, what is this polyploidization? Well, this is the multiplication of the whole chromosome com uh, complement that has occurred frequently in vascular plants. So just as a quick biology review, your haploid is your gametes. In this case, if we're talking about plants, this would be your egg cells or your pollen grains. Diploid would be the normal organism, but here we're looking at the polyploidization, the uh, 3N or the tetraploid, the 4N, multiple copies here from what would be considered normal. The, main, the maintenance of a stable polyploid state over generations requires specific mechanisms to control pairing and distribution of more than two homologous chromosomes during meiosis. So that's just a brief overview of what we're investigating here. We'll get to see this, how this actually changes the cannabis plant's morphology. So first off, why investigate this in the first place? You know, what's the justification for even considering this? Well, polyploidization is considered a viable tool in the genetic improvement of crop plants. The evolutionary success of polyploid plants in nature and under domestication has been attributed to the buffering of mutations. We see this in comparison looking at the regular diploid compared to some of the other types of ploidy levels. Most net evident here with the strawberries, we have a wild strawberries to our cultivated strawberries. Everyone wants larger, bigger fruits, and this is kind of one way, potentially through genetics and these ploidy levels to accomplish this. So looking specifically now at cannabis, leaves collected, um, leaf stomata morphology of mature fan leaves. So we're seeing this comparison here of A is diploid, B is tetraploid, and we see the same thing here with the stomata with C and D. So the leaves collected after four weeks of vegetative growth and one week under flowering lights. That's when this um, material is collected from the plants. Down here, this black and white images, we're looking at nail polish impressions to show the stomata on the uh, kind of underside surface of the fan leaves, the abaxal um, surface. Now, when we talk about nail polish impressions, that's literally kind of a way that you can put nail polish down and kind of lift that to get an idea of what the stomata look like. Remember, the stomata are the pores on the underside of the leaves that regulate um, water loss and carbon dioxide intake. So want to appear larger in size on the tetrapoidy plants. We see that right here. These bars represent the same size. We see these are clearly larger than the diploid organisms here. Then looked at trichome density. So specifically speaking to trichomes, which is very important in cannabis plants. When we're looking at trichomes, uh, the images show the trichome density, again, at that same uh, leaf surface there of the fourth sugar leaf of cannabis sativa strain. Plants A and B are diploid. So here's A and B, these are both diploid. C and D are the tetraploid down here. Leaves were imaged on the seventh week of flowering and note the sidebars, I'm sorry, the scale bars are one millimeter to give you a size uh, comparison there. And we can clearly see that there is definitely uh, more uh, trichomes or the increased density here in the tetraploids. Now the inflorescence architecture, looking at the specific uh, colas or the flowers here, the inflorescence apex, top cola and buds shown in the for two plants during the eighth week of flowering of cannabis sativa strain. Week 12 after transplanting and one week before harvest to give you an idea when this was occurring in this plant. A and B are diploid. I'm sorry, A and C are the diploid here in the same column here. B and D here are the tetraploid. In images, A and D represent the cola, and C and D represent the bud morphology, looking a little bit closer there. And again, we're not seeing stark differences here, but if you look at them long enough, you can definitely see that there are um, some morphological differences in the influence architecture. Now looking more at the data, so that's kind of the large scale look. Well, how do these actually compare when we look at some of the graphs and data generated? Well, the phytochemical content. Dried buds and leaves of cannabis sativa plants of different uh, ploidy were assessed using HPLC and GC for cannabinoids and terpenes. That's high pressure liquid chromatography and gas chromatography. They are those are abbreviations. A is the cannabinoid profile, so we can see right up here, and B is the terpene profile, the um, chart down at the bottom. 
Data or means plus or minus the standard error where 10 diploids and 9 tetraploids were analyzed. Means of different uh, upper and lowercase letters are significantly different using the ANOVA with two keys post hoc test with a p value uh, greater than uh, 0.05 uh, to give you an idea of the statistics behind this. Now, what's the summary here? As we kind of look at the bars in different colors, what are we looking at here? Well, the phytochemical content in the lower leaves is high enough for the trimmed leaf material to be used for extraction in both ploidy levels. Studies which can which could almost double the total production yield. So that's important to remember that the dry uh, trim leaf material also does contain uh, levels that would be worth going through the phase of extraction. Total terpene content of tetrapoid leaves is comparable to the diploid bud, and terpene extracts from the tetrapoid leaves may have commercial value despite low levels of cannabinoids. And we kind of see that comparison there. I'm looking at our diploid and our tetraploid, our differences here. Again, everything is reduced in the leaf overall, but does give it some thought there as far as potentially taking that material, not just discarding it, but going through the process of extraction. And here in the diploid, we see the leaves being uh, lower than the buds. Uh, and here we see the leaves overall being a little bit higher. We see that bud definitely being a B, indicating it's a little bit higher there, indicating more genetic uh, similarities here, uh, but being distinctly higher in the tetraploid bud compared to the diploid there. So again, just looking at some of the stats, we can clearly see there are some differences on the phytochemical content. Now, what do these results indicate? Well, a tetrapoid a a cannabinous plants generally grow comparable to traditional diploids. So that's a good note for those that are uh, looking at actively growing this plant. It's going to behave pretty simply. The tetrapoid uh, can cannabis plants reduced rooting was noted. So that's just might be an area of concern or something to keep an eye on. Tetrapoid cannabis have a similar chemical profile to diploids with notable increases in CBD and subsequent terpenes. So that increase in CBD uh, is important and that is what makes it advantageous to be potentially considering this uh, as a grower here of producing uh, cannabis to look at tetraploids potentially. So what's that kind of grower suggestion, general summary? Well, using polyplosation in cannabis plants may be an effective method for maximizing CBD and terpene production. So that's a very important note there. I do want to make note that if you do read the article in a little bit more detail, they do state that really they did not see much of a change in the THC levels, but it was noticed in CBD and definitely terpene production for these polyploids. So again, just something there to consider, something you may not have been thinking of before. And this just allows or shows how scientific research can really potentially uh, continue the breeding process in the improving of cannabis plants.